And this is Lollipop Monday here on 88.5 WVOF in Fairfield, Connecticut, the upper room with Joe Kelly. We're having Lollipop and Monty Moyer stopping by a little later on in the program. But right now, this uh, gentleman, very talented keyboardist, songwriter, and producer, we wanted to have him on the show for many years. And uh, currently, he's out in Las Vegas working with uh, his buddy Prince and getting ready to do some shows out there at uh, 3121. We welcome and want to thank him for taking time out of his busy schedule, Mr. Morris Hayes. Hey, Morris, how you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, and, and I noticed we, we talked a little bit before. Uh, you got a little mini studio. I know you're always working on your own music. How's things recording on the road? Well, uh, we're you know we're just now at the point of uh, getting it all set up, and uh, it, it it took a little bit of a spill when moving down there. So hopefully, when we get everything plugged up, everything will work properly. But uh, it's it's a pretty cool little portable type of scenario, and you know hopefully we can keep the workflow going. Now you you're still making home in Minneapolis for yourself, right? Yeah, uh, yes, I'm uh, not there very much right. these days, but uh, but that's still home. Now, you know, Lollipop today is our featured guest, and she's got a brand new album, self-titled CD. Uh, how far back do you go with uh, Lollipop and, and her days in Minneapolis? Oh, gosh, man. Uh, it's got to be like the early to mid-90s uh, when she was well, just a kid. I mean, really. And um, But she, you know, exhibited a uh, a real knack uh you know for for for, for the music and and really uh, wanted to she had a keen interest in, in in music and i remember her coming to uh uh my studio at the time with my uh, uh, uh production partner jack robinson who passed away uh, a couple years ago um um i think she was uh you know in, connected with with jack and she would come by the studio and and really just watch his work and you know inquire about this and that and the other thing so she just exhibited a great interest in music and and production and you know and, and the whole song process she even told me she was uh sending out packages for you with all your production stuff yeah 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 she yeah she, she used to you know basically like i said she worked in there with us and and just kind of assisting us and and you know which is you know i still think it's one of the better ways to get involved in, in in music i mean a lot of times uh you know people don't realize when you start out at a level like that sometimes you get a very good insight of of course a lot of people of note uh that i've come across uh they basically started that way i remember i was talking to uh shaka khan's brother and um uh puffy p diddy or diddy uh, uh as it is i guess now uh at that point was a uh, basically a gopher for them and then now he's a record mogul i mean he started out getting sandwiches and, and whatever he could do to be in the studio situation and that's basically the way i uh got to working with prince i you know would take any odd job at paisley park i could basically get you know driving a van or or whatever to, because i wanted to be around the, the music i wanted to be around that that uh environment and, and learn from that situation so it, it's you know a lot of times when you start out in that capacity you know it really gives you a ground uh level view of how things operate and you know how all of that stuff comes about so well i know lollipop she uh she has always spoken highly of you and uh you know she put us together and uh we're going to listen to something from uh lollipop's self-titled debut right now it's available at myspace.com backslash lollipop this is a, a track which actually references Sheila E in one of the, the lyrics. It's called Glamorous Life, and we'll listen to this right now. Glamorous from Lollipop. Morris Hayes will come back right here on WVF in the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. From Lollipop CD, Glamorous and the Glamorous Tour 2006. Ready to embark on some dates. They're playing in uh, Minneapolis this week, and they're going to continue along in Boston, Indianapolis, Milwaukee, Jersey City, and uh, later on in Chicago, and in 2007, more dates to follow. Morris Hayes is our special guest, and uh, he's worked together with Lollipop uh, before out in Minneapolis. Now, you got your start out in Arkansas, and uh, tell us about your initial uh, introduction into music, and was the uh, keys your first uh, instrument? 
Yeah, pretty much my my first and uh, and my main instrument, really. I mean, I, I play a little bit of drums and you know, uh, mess with other little instrumentation and those type of things. But the keyboards has always been my my main instrument. That you know, I try to just try to focus on what I can do pretty well and try to stick with that. So that's kind of been my main focus. But uh, it's a funny thing, man. I was it's a, I was just talking to somebody um, uh, the other day and. And I'm reminded about when I when I was in school, and because I'm kind of a late bloomer with the whole music thing, it just was something that I kind of got into, uh, um, you know. Later, I, I played when I was younger just a little bit, but I was very, you know, pretty bad, you know. And I played at church, and the, the whole point at church is it's not so much, you know, that you're fantastic and all that. It's just your your willingness to participate, and. Um, you know that's that's what church is all about is service so you just go in and do the best you can and everybody's like oh that's good baby that's good <laughs> and and that's cool right, you right. Know, but but um you know uh so everybody in the little small southern church they thought that was cool and everything but um um you know you just work and do the best you can so it wasn't until i got into college and 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 like um you know uh that sort of at that, that time when I started to really kind of bloom musically, and it's a funny thing. I actually had a scholarship for art. I was a, mostly an artist at that point. I liked to paint and draw, and so I got a scholarship for that. And and, and just fate would have it, uh, the art and music building were one and the same. And so I used to have to walk past all these music rooms every day, and I just started looking into each one of these little cubicles, and it was always something cool, like there'd be a cat in there with a saxophone, and it'd be a vocalist and a piano, and and I just had to walk about it every day, and I'd see all of these different things going on. I was like, wow, that's really cool. And I just started getting more and more interested in the musical side of things, and then started to enhance on my own, you know, playing the little bit that I did know, the little pluck this and that and out. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, it was just a kind of thing to where um, uh, I just really uh, got intrigued by what I would see walking by every day. And, and that was very cool. And so I, slowly I just started to, to really morph into more the musical side and just really start investigating um, what about that that I, I, you know, that I really was drawn to and then start moving towards that. And you could see uh, some of Morris's great artistic uh, work, which, which you hope to find more time, uh, you know, to, to do, I guess. Um, it's on myspace.com backslash Morris Hayes, right? You got some pics up there. Yeah, I got I got some photos and stuff. I, I'm kind of new to the whole MySpace thing. It's it's a it's a truly a, a fascinating thing and kind of frightening on one side because yeah. it's 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 incredibly massive right. uh, in terms of um, you know the, the the scope of this thing and it's just uh, it's an interesting thing. I you know just as an experiment one day when I was a little bored, I just uh, there was uh, I was looking at someone else's site and I just clicked on just some random person and i've and i said i'm gonna see how many clicks would it take to get back to to me uh -huh. or to get back to somebody else that i knew like you know i have some friends like men condition and some other cats who who i like and, and i just said i want to see how actually that's what the experiment was at first to see how quick i could get back to men condition and i went through i mean a complete stranger from somewhere i don't even remember it's just some weird that's like kansas or something and 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 about, oh, I guess about maybe 15 clicks, 20 clicks. Just by picking random people, I just, I came across men condition in somebody's friend list. And it's, and I mean, and it went from like, back to, from like Germany to somewhere else. And, and, and it ended up coming back to them. And, and that was crazy to me. I was like, yeah. oh, it really is a, a, a community like, a, like nothing I've ever seen. And it's just, it's a crazy thing. Yeah, it would. there are people on there that have you know at literally millions of uh, views and hits, and it's just crazy. It's a whole other thing. It's really uh, it's fascinating. We just hope people still come out to the gigs. I know you like to go see other bands, and, and me too. From when I was a kid, you know, we just hope they turn the computer off a little bit and come out to the shows. Well, you know what, man? You know, the the that's the beautiful thing about uh, real music and and, and real musicians. Uh, at the end of the day. I think it still comes down to who can go out and who can perform and who can really do what it is. I mean, we're, nowadays, man, everything is so 
smoke and mirrors and you know, everybody you know if you got a pretty face and a pretty good body and this that and the other and, and and you can you know you can get a lot of places but at the end of the day when you turn off all the, the, the pro tools and the auto tune and all this other stuff when you get somebody who can really put it down that's what really matters and and that's what's really cool and so i think my space and all this stuff has a space but it's not the end all and, and so that's what still makes radio cool. That's what still makes, you know, uh, live music cool because there's still another avenue that people can really get to this music. And, and, and what I've also found from the Internet, and, it, you know, it's, it can be the great deceiver because you don't really know at the end of the day if who you're talking to is who they really are. Right, right. You know, that's the thing. And so, uh, you know, I had a guy that, you know, tell me on there, hey, it's Prince. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm knowing I talk to Prince. And I know it's not him. So... <laughs> you know, but that's what he's putting himself off as, and and clearly that's not the case. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of that sort of thing. And so you just have to just take it with a grain of salt. I mean, just understand that it is what it is, and it can be a great tool. And on, then on the other hand, you don't, you know, you get somebody in a back room somewhere in, in Wisconsin or something, and, and I could say that they're our next door neighbors. Right. But uh, and, and then you don't you don't know what you have. You know what I'm saying? So. I think at the end of the day, if you can go and see a real band, and you can know when you walk out that you liked it or you didn't, but it's real, you know. And so that's a that's a, that's the thing for me. And I always love to go see a good group, good band. I always like to be inspired, so I, I like to hear good music, and I like to hear people who really have respect for the music and respect for their own uh, their their art. And then when you do that, then that usually turns out something good. Yeah, Morris Hayes, he's a he's a cool guy and a talented guy. Uh, he's currently out in Las Vegas uh, once again with uh, Prince and the MPG. They're doing a lot of shows over at the new club, 3121, the Rio Hotel. Uh, we're going to get into something with uh, when you were playing with Michael, Michael Bland and Sonny Thompson and Barbarella, uh, The Good Life. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that's a, you know, the stuff you did there. A lot of people, I'm sure you know, have fond memories of, of that particular incarnation of the MPG. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. You guys still jam once in a while on the Twin Cities, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I've done some recent sessions with Sonny and Mike, and and, and so they're, they're still just uh, just extraordinary players and just extraordinary people. And, and, I mean, I love those guys. Those are guys when I came in that were there, and, and uh, they're, and, you know, Barbarella and, and Sonny and Mike and, and Sonny. See, I had to do that because it's an inside joke. One of our tour bus drivers, for some odd reason, thought Sonny was two people and will always name us. He's like, oh, there's my guys. There's Morris and Tommy and Sonny and Michael and Sonny. And he would always name Sonny twice. I'm like, why does he do that? But <laughs> it's such a funny thing. Yeah. Sonny was so good that he just named him twice. <laughs> right, right, right. So we're going to get into this. This is Good Life from uh, the MPG. Recorded out in Minneapolis and various places. And uh, we'll come back and speak more with Morris Hayes. From the New Power Generation, going back in time in, in the 90s. And uh, our special guest and guy played keyboards on that particular track, Mr. Morris Hayes. He's our special guest. He's back, uh, has been for the last year or so with Prince. And, and you have been one of the longtime uh, band members. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's, you know, particular record for years but you, you're right up there right going that long with prince yeah i guess uh, definitely uh he's had a few people that have uh, you know over the years been off and on and been around for a while and uh, i'm fortunate to be one of them so uh you know we're, 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 i'm pleased about it and um you know prince a good cat and a good cat to work with and so it's it's it's, it's cool you know i i enjoy the work um, um so it's it's a blessing man it's really cool now, now, what's it like when you, I mean, started out going, like you said, wanted to take any job to be around the scene at Paisley Park, and then you became a member of his band, and now you're going back as a seasoned pro producer, world-traveled musician, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're the only keyboardist in the band right now, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, what's the difference as far as, you know, your responsibilities as a band? Or are, are you the musical director for the band? Well, Prince pretty much uh, directs the, the, the music. I mean, this is a very small unit. I mean, there's four of us counting him that's playing. Any so horns? A lot of sound coming from a very few amount of people. Right. So it's, it's, Prince has always been dynamic when it comes to orchestration. It's about not so many as how many. Do you know there are you know, 
uh, probably twice as many people or better that were in the uh, the band when he did musicology. It's just, you know, when you have, you kind of dole out the parts based on the, 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 the amount of people that you have in the unit. And so he's just very good for orchestration. You know, he knows what'll work. And he, and he tries things, and you know he just knows how to fit it in, and so that that's what the beauty is uh, to to how he does. And and you know, and me, what I try to do is I try to keep up with the technology. I use a couple keyboards now that are very advanced in terms of capabilities as of what they can do. There are not a lot of people who use them, and so I'm almost like a, you know, and I hate to be you know like a, a guinea pig, but it it is a a, a lot of work to kind of squeeze in in order to get the sound like you want without a uh, with a minimal amount of uh, hardware so uh you know we're ex- you know we're, we're working with units like that that have that kind of capability and uh he allows me to 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 use that technology and so that's a that's a big thing in terms of uh and how i can you know can get things organized and get things done and you know we play everything so there's no recordings and all that kind of stuff so um you know. and no and no horn section on this uh, gig. Well, at the moment there isn't. I'm sure that at some point there probably will be because uh, I know that um, uh, he likes that sort of thing. And I mean, and, and this would be a great you know type of venue for that sort of thing because it opens the set up a lot more when you have horn sections. When you have you know people like Maceo and Greg and and folks like that, it just opens up everything a lot more because there's just more latitude that you can take in terms of. Uh, the, the type of songs and 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 a variety of songs that you can use, and so uh, I, I certainly hope that at some point that he you know that he incorporates it. And I think that he will. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But either way, you know, my thing is we just have to be prepared to do whatever. Right. If only two of us, then the two got to handle it. So right, right. You know, that- we just find a way to make it work. But of course, that always opens up a. Uh, a cool scenario when you have other players like Maceo, then that just gives you another whole direction to take. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners know already, but uh, Prince and the MPG setting up shop, running the, the uh, 3121 Club in the Rio Hotel in Las Vegas. You can go to the website 3121.com. Uh, I'm told Wednesday night's going to be uh, Prince Presents Friends, uh, like that? That's correct. Yeah. So you're looking forward to jamming with some of those people as well, I'm sure. Yes, yeah, I mean, if you look at the website, there's a you know a lot of uh, fine artists that's included in that, of course, that he's worked with and you know over the years, you know, uh, with you know uh, Kip and and, and Maceo and Chaka and and uh, the Roots and you know uh, Guapoli, just a lot of people like that that are you know common. They're real fantastic uh, musicians in their own right, and uh, that certainly. Um, you know, we that are real musicians that we really love, and and so it only you know stands a reason we can get them in there, and you know the Erica Badus of life, and all of those folks, and then you know come and really have uh, that kind of musical showcase, and that's what's so so cool about that, you know. And he's got like Frank McCombs, and just a lot of people like that that's just real talented and and, and class acts, and so uh, you know we're that's another thing we're looking forward to, and and growing that night to where. You know, people also can come and get a good dose of, uh, you know, other artists that 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 uh, we look at like us in terms of, you know, uh, attention to musical detail and and the, and the quality that they bring. You know, Patti LaBelle, all of that. I mean, that's, you know, these are heavy hitters in their own right, and uh, so um, you know, we're real thrilled about that. And then uh, Friday and Saturday nights, Prince and the MPG, which will be the big showcase for you guys. And how how are the rehearsals? Uh 2006 as opposed to when you first got in the band any difference saw uh, in how yeah, it, is. it is different and in, in that uh I, you know i i've learned not to personally to, like stress of course when i was uh, first got in the band i you know i felt that i'd played some great trick on you know on everybody uh-huh. I, I, I often tell when i when prince asked me about you know getting in the band and everything i i, I often tell people about the, the walk i had to my car after that meeting halfway to the car i was like you know this is great this is great oh my gosh this is great and then the other half was like oh my gosh <laughs> now i'm in trouble because i've fooled them right and now they're gonna know that i you know that i suck and and then and, and 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 then i'm gonna be at the laughing stock so it was a half a 50 50 trip to the car right. for you and then oh gosh now they're gonna know 
Right. Oh, that's I've, cool. <laughs> I've tricked these good people. Right. And so, but you know, you know, God is good, man. And 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 whereas I had a nervous stomach a lot of times, and Sonny was was so awesome to the point that I remember scratching my head leaving one day after he did something that I considered pretty amazing. Him and Michael Bland have perfect pitch, and so. Um, uh, we were playing this really complex piece. I think it was uh, uh, a, a little a little segue we call intermission, and it's a it's a uh, just a flurry of music that goes by in a short amount of time. And Sonny was playing, you know, like he does, it's, which is really crazy. And he's playing this, but one of the horn players, one of the trumpet players, just hit a, a note, and this is at like a rehearsal, and it hit a note that wasn't right. And um, we, once we stopped. Sonny, you know, tells him, hey, um, that note you hit, that should have been an A flat instead of like an A. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. And now we had two trumpet players. So first of all, the fact that he knew which note it was, and it's complicated as his part was, he not only knew what note he should have hit and what note he did hit, but he knew who did it. And so I was sitting there thinking, like, I, I'm in a world of trouble here. I don't have any business here. It's, I'm like going, oh, my gosh, this, I, I don't, this, you know, I'm in trouble. Because, I, I mean, this is the bass player that's in this. Mm -hmm. You know, and Michael Bland can sit there and say, yeah, you're right, you know, because they both can hear, they can hear grass grow. So it, it was it was really uh, quite intimidating that uh, this was the, the uh, you know, this is what the epitome of the big boys and big leagues word to me and I just felt like wow you know I don't, I don't read music and I don't you know have that kind of but you know every everybody has a function and you have a place and that's if nothing else Joe what what I would like people to understand that listen to your show and and that um, you know that are out there trying to you know uh, work their way into this all you have to really realize is and I'm a living witness and example that um, if you know if I can do it anybody can do it and that you, but you have to d decide in your own mind because um perception is reality and if you say that you you can't do it and if you say that it's impossible then it is because now you that's what you're telling yourself and that's the you know that's a, a negative energy and when you don't understand that uh your mouth your tool your mouth is an incredible uh, a tool that can be either for your advancement or for your detriment. Your tongue is an incredible thing, and if you don't wield it in the right way, then you know you're digging yourself a real deep hole. And so I had to get to a place where I had to start telling myself that um, uh, there's no such thing as impossible. You just have to, you know, determine how hard you want to work to make it happen. And you don't figure, you don't, you know, figure out just how to win. You figure out how to win and how to just keep moving forward. And and that was one of the things I had to learn early on. And then when you get to when you kind of get to that place, then you start looking at things in a different light, and you stop saying, "Well, you know, everything's impossible, and I can't do this." And when you get a setback, and then that sort of thing, it's just about you know deciding at some point that uh, that failure is not an option. And and so you know I'm going to do everything in my power not to do that, not to not to uh, fall by the wayside. And not to say that you won't, uh, you know, come up against stumbling blocks, but what you do is you start to condition yourself to uh, to, to move forward. And, and that's my thing that, I, that certainly I would like to leave with everybody, is that if you say you can do it, then you can. It's just as simple as that. Yeah, well, well said and positive words from a uh, talented brother, Morris Hayes. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of musicians out there, people in general, are going to dig that. Well, I hope so, man, because that, that's the honest-to-God yeah. truth. And, and, you know, when I was sitting there with all of those guys, you know, just really going through my thing and, like, you know, going like, oh, my gosh, you know. And, and then you look at the fact that I was there for so long, and, I, and of course, everybody knows that it, that knows Prince knows he's had the finest musicians uh, that, uh, that are out there. You know, uh, Lisa Coleman and Matt Fink and, and Tommy and, and, and Renato. These are all incredible, incredible uh, keyboard players. That, you know that um, that I have a great deal of respect for and admiration, and and uh, for me to even be considered amongst those folks, I mean it's a, it's an honor and it's a blessing, and and so, but it's and and I don't have any of that musical training. I just have my ear. I know what I like, and I know what you know what what I hear, and so that's just to let people know that man, you, when you know when everybody wants to start saying that 
you know, that you only can be from Berkeley or you can only be from these other places, you know, and there's nothing wrong with music education. And I, you know, I wish that I, you know, could have gone to a Berkeley or something like that and done something like that. But at the same time, you know, everybody has their thing. And that's just to say that you are the coal and steel behind your operation, meaning that, you know, you have to be the power that, that goes behind it and you have to be the positive force in it. And, you know, and I know it works and that's, you know, People can say whatever. They can say it's corny or hokey or whatever. I know it works. I'm, uh, like I say, I'm living proof of it. Well, we should uh, talk briefly about, before we uh, let you go and play a few tracks uh, you've been involved with and uh, about your production work. I mean, Kip Blackshire, a great friend of yours and a great friend of our show. Um, you work with him, the new Congress, and uh, other people. Tell us about your production work and, you know, hopefully one day a solo record from you. Well, you know, I'm actually, it's funny you should say, I'm actually starting to work on a, a solo project. I actually, I'm, I'm been thinking about a few different projects because there's a lot of things that's close to my heart musically. I, I like a lot of different types of music. You know, I played with Maceo for, the, you know, once I left Prince in like 2002, I started playing with Maceo. And, uh, you know, which, which you know, brought me to a, a, a another realm of funk and, and, and just, grooving with mace and and i like that you know so I'm and and we also dug uh that little slow jam section spotlight on the keyboards you did on the tour that was yeah, nice that was a lot of fun you know mace would let me do a thing and and, and that was cool you know it just allowed, allowed me to be on the spot because it's not something that i really have done a lot they just kind of mace kind of just thrust me in the position and, and and just say okay you got a spot just go for it and you do what you do and so uh, it was an interesting thing uh you know to uh to, to have to you know just come up with something for you know a few 10 15 minutes or whatever it was and in certain spots and and just make something and that was cool uh, but that was a very good confidence builder for me. Uh, you know, Maceo just, you know, had a lot of confidence in me, and and that, and that just really was cool as well. And I like a lot of groups like, of course, like us and Massive Attack, and, and just different textures and things. So I don't feel like just because, um, uh, you know, well, I, I like a lot of different things. I don't feel like I should be limited to just one thing. So I'm going to look at doing a lot of different type of uh sounds when I started thinking about a solo project and, and things like that so I'm looking forward to it well, I gotta thank you Morris um, you've been really cool with us and uh, we're gonna come out and see you out in Vegas 3121.com for Prince and the MPG and Morris Hayes and uh, we should go out uh, with actually we'll play a couple tracks off at 3121 I understood you did uh, Fury last night for the press preview right yeah we did that was cool Yeah, and we'll go with something uh Maceo, uh, a little flavor to it, would get on the boat and also uh, play something live from Paisley Park from Kip Blackshire, Morris Hayes on this one, Don't Leave. You remember that night, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So say hi to Prince and everybody in the band, and we'll see you out in Vegas. And, and thanks for uh, coming by and saying some nice words about your friend Lollipop, Lollipop, electrolollipop.com. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That, the best to, to them and, and their efforts. I'm, I'm really proud of her and proud of the group and everything and all the people that, you know, uh, Matt and, and Monty and the folks that worked on that record. So I'm very pleased and, 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 and proud that, that that's coming out. It, it, man, you got keyboard uh, heaven out there in uh, Minneapolis. So many great players. Oh, man, yeah, it's very cool. And so it's just, yeah. it's, it's, it, you know, it's just an amazing uh, town for music and with the Petersons and, and Matt and Tommy and all those guys that are there. It's really incredible, really. All right, thanks, Morris. This is Prince from 3121. It's called Fury. <laughs> 